what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my guide to ethel fled in rise of kingdoms so ethel fled is a commander that i get a ton of questions about because she is the number one legendary commander for free to play players and by that i mean she is by far the easiest to get you are guaranteed to expertise her as a free to play player so long as you are actively playing the game and you log in pretty much every day right that's that's really the only requirements there's actually no way to buy her with real money real dollars it's it's not possible so if nobody else this is at least one legendary commander that you know that you can expertise as a free to play player so a lot of players are interested in her because she's easy to get right so you can start to plan ahead of time knowing okay eventually you know I'm going to expertise her so how do I use her how should I be using her and the answer is yes you're gonna see a lot of ethel fled out in the open field even though she is a free-to-play legendary she's still an excellent commander that a lot of players use she has a specific role she does that role really really well and so I wanted to make a guide basically explaining to you guys how I use ethel fled and, and kind of what I think about her as a commander so the first thing we have to talk about is what uh how do you get ethel fled right like what ways can you obtain sculptures for ethel fled and if you go into her skills there's literally one way to get ethel fled and you get her from the expedition metal shop right here this is the only way that you can get ethel fled right 1500 uh credits i think these are called credits uh medals whatever you want to call them uh 1500 medals per sculpture you can only get three of her per day so what this means is that uh pay to win players can't actually obtain her faster than free to play players except for the fact that pay to win players are going to be able to get these medals uh, sooner right so in a brand new kingdom a, a pay to win player is going to be able to progress farther in the expedition because they'll have more powerful commanders and whatever um but in terms of number of sculptures per day that they can accumulate they can only get three per day so it's still going to take months and months and months in order to expertise ethel fled but don't let that discourage you you should be getting sculptures of her every single day until she is expertised as a brand new player i would suggest make sure you max out constants first and then every other metal should be going into ethel fled unless you see a regular legendary down here which is pretty rare you don't see them that often so most of the time you should be getting ethel fled sculptures every day so with that being said let's talk a little bit about what exactly ethel fled does like what is her role in this game is she is she good in the open field is she good for canyon is she good for garrison what is she good at well she is a leadership peacekeeping support commander so if you guys have been following this channel for a while i i always tell you guys if you want to know what a commander does best just look at their skill trees this will give you a general idea of what you should be doing with them however with ethel fled these trees don't necessarily reflect uh what she does right because if you look at somebody like Tao Tao, it's pretty straightforward right he has the cavalry and mobility tree which means he's going to be fast and you want all calves if you look at minamoto same thing calves and skill damage oh okay you look at richard okay we're going to give him infantry and he's good for defense so he's pretty tanky but ethel fled it's a little different we have leadership which is a very general tree and we have support which is a very general tree um obviously it is a bit more supportive obviously that's the name it's if you look at the talents in there um it's more of supporting out on the battlefield but ultimately there's no clear-cut answer as to what she does best and i think this is probably why there are a lot of players who have questions about ethel fled so let's instead go over what her skills are and then we're going to take a look at some of the talent builds that you can use with her so her first skill is called arrow of iron this skill you want to make sure if you're still leveling her up you want to get this to five before proceeding because this is an insanely good skill so deals a direct dam uh, deals damage to up to five enemies in a forward facing fan shaped area with a damage factor of 800 and reduces their attack defense and health by 30 percent for the next two seconds with a 1000 rage requirement so this skill is not only doing aoe it's dealing decent damage to all of those targets and um it's actually doing a pretty massive debuff now that debuff is only for two seconds but it's it's a 90 percent debuff right whoever she's attacking they are going to be losing attack defense and health and that's up to five enemies so she can debuff up to five enemies 
it, with a single skill attack that's really really powerful really good and her damage factor while it is 800 which is much lower than a lot of other uh legendary commanders with aoe for example if we take a look at Esong, if you have him expertise his direct damage factor is 1700 however the damage he deals actually is decreased by 15 percent for each additional target hit so if he hits five enemies which is the most he can hit he's really dealing about 900 damage factor to each of them which honestly that's very similar to ethel fled's 800 so her damage factor has no fall off which means it's actually pretty it's pretty on par with other aoe like that's a pretty decent damage factor um in the open field so that's great right that's great she's dealing a ton of of aoe that's awesome let's look at her second skill it's called thunderous force it says counterattack damage against your troops is reduced by 20 percent. so this is really great if she's attacking a flag or even in just regular open field combat she's taking 20 percent less counterattack damage that's cool then it says when actively attacking you have a 10 percent chance to reduce the movement speed of enemy cavalry by 50 percent and the movement speed of other troops by 30 percent this slow lasts for three seconds now this is really interesting um what's cool about this is that you can actually catch players in the open field that maybe they're trying to run away from a group fight and you can slow them down with this skill if it does happen to pop off um it does affect cavalry more heavily because they are actually just faster in general so this kind of levels the playing field by debuffing them by a little bit more which is nice as well now this also plays really heavily into her expertise which we'll talk about in a second her third skill is called synergy it says all troops under your command gain an attack buff of 35 percent against barbarians and other neutral units and all commanders gain 35 percent experience so that's really good this is her peacekeeping uh skill tree or talent tree showing up in her skills right this is what makes her a really 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 great peacekeeper very good for killing barbarians the second best in the game of course followed by lohar who gives you 70 percent experience which is crazy she gives you 35 Boudica gives you, I think, 20 or something like that. Um, so yeah, 20. So she's even better than Boudica at killing uh, barbarians and leveling up your commanders, which is awesome. Her fourth skill is called Fortress of Mercia. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but it says when this commander leads a rally attack, the rallied army have a 10% higher troop limit. Okay, so she's has some synergy with rallying there interesting um when this commander is leading at least three different troop types their damage is increased by 20 percent now now notice this second line doesn't reference anything about about rallies this is just when this commander is leading three different troop types so that's whether it's in an army whether it's in a rally it doesn't matter if it's in a garrison if she's leading those troop types they gain a 20 percent uh damage bonus so that's really really good if anything has changed regarding that mechanic comment down below but as far as i know this specific line here does not reference anything about being in a rally or anything like that so this is just straight up if her army is mixed then you get 20 percent bonus damage so that means that you're gonna want to have a mixed army with ethel Flood. pretty straightforward right pretty straightforward now her expertise is called warrior queen and it says deal an additional no, sorry deal an extra 20 percent damage to enemies who have been slowed and so that's where thunderous force comes into play where when this does actually pop off suddenly if you have our expertise not only are they slowed but they're taking 20 percent more damage as well so that's really really powerful right really powerful now you know there there's something to be to be said about this fourth skill it does talk about leading rallies and that may make you inclined to use her in a rally um i think the only time that i would really encourage an ethel fled rally is if you are counter rallying an enemy's rally so what do i mean by that well if you're defending a flag and an enemy rallies that flag in order to kill that rally faster you can do one of two things you can continuously reinforce that flag or you can launch a rally attack on that rally and using ethel fled for that counter rally might actually be an insanely good tactic and i do actually recommend doing that but besides that 
I don't actually think you should be rallying cities or flags or anything like that with Ethel fled um, she doesn't have as high of a of a single target DPS as some other commanders have and so you may not want to do that um, as just a straight up rally on a city Ethel fled's probably not who you want to go with but after looking at her skills we've learned a couple things she has a decent aoe damage factor that can hit up to five targets she's debuffing those targets by a crazy amount she slows down enemies and she deals extra damage to them when they're slowed and she also uh, deals extra damage when she's in a mixed army so every part about that makes her a very well-rounded commander but also mainly a supportive commander right she's very supportive she doesn't have the highest aoe damage she doesn't have the highest single target damage she's not a commander that excels with a specific troop type right she's not amazing with cavalry she's not amazing with infantry and she's not amazing with archers she's very good with all of them mixed together which means that she's a very good mixed supportive army that still can deal a decent amount of damage now as far as talent builds go for ethel fled if you're building her as a peacekeeper what i would recommend is you come up here and you grab quick study then i would recommend getting trophy hunter and then once you get trophy hunter i would actually probably recommend uh either getting fresh recruits or making your way up to rejuvenate because rejuvenate for the support tree is infamous for being much better than rejuvenate in the skill tree despite them looking the same and having the same name they are actually different this is a much better version it's almost three times as good and then ultimately once you get rejuvenate and fresh recruits then I would bring uh, curing chance I would max out this peacekeeping tree and then you could put your other points wherever you want I would definitely recommend loose formation and then it you know this elixir you don't really need this because you know unless you're pairing her with somebody who does healing but whatever this is my build for killing barbarians I'm pretty happy with it I think it's very good but if you're going to use her as a primary I have two different builds here that you can try out this is the first one um, what we did here is we went all the way to the end of the support tree with cage of thorns I would put one point in cage of thorns then I would probably make your way up to fresh recruits and then grab armored to the teeth and then I would make your way all the way up to strategic prowess and grab armed to the teeth as well uh, on that right side the remaining two points that you'll have you can put into uh, the March speed here and then the last point I just put in cage of thorns again um, now the reason that putting one point in cage of thorns is important is because this skill says after using an active skill reduce March speed by nearby enemy troops of five percent uh, here it says 10% because I have two skill points in there but if I go here it's it's actually just five percent the reason that you only need one point in that tree and the reason that we even get cage of thorns to begin with is because if you take a look at her expertise it says it deals an extra 20% damage to enemies who have been slowed but it doesn't say that that they have to be really slowed they just have to be slowed whether you slow them by 20% or by 1% they're still going to take an extra 20% damage. So you might as well save your talent points and only put a single point in there. Now, again, for this build, I didn't really have a great place to put those extra points. I put one of them here for March speed, which I think is good. But um, the other one I just had left over, I put it in cage of thorns. Of course, you could put it somewhere else. If you want a little bit of normal attack, you could put it here. If you want a little bit of defense here, a little bit of attack here, it's up to you what you do with that last point. It doesn't really uh, make too much of a difference. Now, the difference between this build and this build, obviously you can see it's pretty straightforward. They're mostly the same, uh, but it does flop over from one side to the other. Now, this build right here is a little bit more tanky because it says every time you use a skill, it increases your defense by 20% for two seconds. Um, it's a that's a very short um, buff but it is pretty significant 20% defense is nice um, so I actually like that a lot the problem with this build is that you do have those two points left over at the end that you know really it's one point it's one point left over at the end that there's not a really great place to put it um, once you once you get all the way up here so that is kind of unfortunate but if you take a look at this build I think this build uses the points really really well um so same thing here we only went to one point in cage of thorns for this one um and then here we brought our way up to close formation and it says when this army led by this commander has reduced to 50 percent strength increase attack by 12 percent so the right side is a guaranteed uh 20 percent defense bonus for two seconds every time a skill goes off this one is a 12 percent um attack buff 
but it's only under 50 percent however it lasts forever after that which is really good so it's up to you which of these two builds you would prefer um this one you know if if I, I personally, the, the problem that I have with this one is that I don't really like when my armies go below 50%. And so that's the only time that you're going to actually gain benefit of this. So if you know that you're going to be in the open field and you're going to fight until that army is dead, then this is probably a better build. However, this build will guarantee you a constant defense buff um, because of rejuvenate, right? And so what, what rejuvenate's doing is it actually restores 150 rage every time a skill goes off, which means uh, Elto Fled launches a skill, you gain 150 rage, then a turn goes by. Then you have your secondary commander launch a skill and you get an extra 150 rage. That's 300 rage and that's 33%, almost 33% um, of your of your rage bar, right? Not to mention the rage that you're gaining over time naturally. And so once you hit that next uh, active skill, it's going to it's going to cause rejuvenate to go off again. And so it kind of the more skill attacks you do, the more skill attacks you're going to keep doing. And so it speeds up. And and as you're launching skill attack, skill attack, skill attack, you're actually going to get that defense bonus over and over and over again. And so this build, in, in my opinion, is probably a little bit better. Um, you can take this point out of Cage of Thorns, just leave one here, and you can put that last point maybe here for the extra 50% health. Uh, I'm sorry, extra half a percent of health. Um, it's up to you what you do with that last point. You know it's it's unfortunate though because if you look there is uh, of these four talents here this one this one this one and this one only two of them i think are pretty good and, and those two are fresh recruits here and um hidden wrath will generate some rage for you i think this normal attack damage is kind of useless and of course this healing herbs is only useful if you're pairing her with a healer but when i talk about some of the commanders i pair her with none of them really do any healing so healing herbs is going to be kind of a waste regardless and i think steely soul is kind of a waste too it's three talent points and you only get one and a half percent normal attack damage like that's so minor and ba you'll barely notice it so you know no matter which one you go with it's not perfect um and and for that reason i actually don't really use ethel flood as a primary right i don't really use her as a primary but these are some examples of, of if you are going to then this is what you would do and when you do use her as a primary you will want to have a mixed army with her right you want a mixed army um, not only for her skills but because armed to the teeth and armored to the teeth give you really nice buffs if they are a mixed army with three different troop types so that's what i would recommend hopefully you guys understand um what we're doing here and and kind of synergizing these talents with her skills right we're slowing them so they get an extra 20 percent damage we're gaining a ton of rage so we pop off that debuff over and over and over again and that'll cause us to get more of this uh 20 percent defense buff as well and then the mixed army kind of synergizes here with armed and armored to the teeth and then fresh recruits just brings more troops which is awesome with that being said let's talk a little bit about the commanders that you can pair with ethel flight i have three recommendations that i'm going to show you guys the first recommendation is a pretty obvious one and it's actually sun tzu um, i've talked about this commander pairing in multiple videos of mine i've talked about it in my sun tzu video i've talked about it in my commander pairings video i like the pairing of sun tzu and ethel fled um, when i do this pairing i actually have sun tzu as primary and there's a couple of reasons for that the first reason is that when you have a commander in the open field whoever the primary is is what the nameplate is going to show and when i say nameplate i mean this right here this is the nameplate right and so when you're in the open field the nameplate that you see is the primary commander and you don't really see the nameplate of the secondary commander so when you're in the open field and you have sun tzu primary well sun tzu has a ton of synergy with a lot of commanders and you don't really know who the secondary could be for that sun tzu it could be a charles martel and that'll be a really uh tanky army and so a lot of times um and take this with a grain of salt but a lot of times players will be less likely to attack a sun tzu than an ethel fled and part of the reason for that is because sun tzu could have a very tanky commander behind him he could have you know a, a multitude of things behind that nameplate not only that but sun tzu is a little bit more tanky than ethel fled because he does have the damage reduction of 10 percent on his third skill so sun tzu's a little bit more tanky than ethel fled and he's a little bit more unpredictable whereas if you see an ethel fled in the open field you know that she needs to be targeted she's a target in the open field because she is debuffing so powerfully everyone around her 
that Ethelfled needs to be taken care of very quickly, and people do. People target Ethelfled in the open fields because she's she's very supportive. She is very detrimental to the to you and your and your allies, and also she's pretty squishy. You can you can kill an Ethelfled relatively easily as long as she's not paired with somebody very tanky, and even then she kind of goes down kind of quick. Uh, you typically don't see Ethelfled paired with a tanky commander because that's not what she does best. She's great at dealing aoe she's great at debuffing and the more skill attack she does the more effective she is at that and so you're not going to see her too often with a tank but you could see a sun Tzu with a tank so that's why for me i pair sun Tzu primary with ethel fled secondary that way it's a little bit it's a little bit less likely to be targeted in the open field now granted people do still target sun Tzu because he's also a huge threat in the open field he does a ton of aoe sometimes he has e song a behind him which also does insane aoe so again you know it's 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 difficult to say which one is targeted more but i personally think that ethel Flood is targeted more in the open field because everybody knows that she is doing such crazy debuffing to everybody in the open field that the sooner that you take care of her the easier it will be to take care of everybody else in the open field after she's gone so with that being said i do sun Tzu primary ethel fled secondary and the way that i have him built is full skill tree um and then we have some talents uh in 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 the infantry tree as well notably we went up to snare of thorns which gives normal attacks a 10 percent chance to give a give a slowdown and that slowdown will trigger the expertise of ethel fled and that will give you a 20 percent damage buff as well now if you do decide to do this what i would recommend is actually take off the three points of latent power because these points really will not have an effect on ethel fled at all and they do only apply to sun Tzu's active skill and his additional damage factor is pretty low as it is so in hindsight i would actually remove these three points and put them somewhere else you can put them really anywhere uh, if you want you can increase the normal attack damage or you can probably put one i would put one here in health and maybe the rest in snare of thorns if you want to if you want to slow them even further it's up to you um, but this is the build that i use when i have my ethel fled as secondary of course if you do have a sun Tzu primary ethel fled secondary you will still want to have a mixed army but i would recommend having it mostly uh, infantry i would have it mostly infantry because you do have this infantry tree that you have invested in slightly um however you also have the 10 percent infantry health so there are benefits to having a mixed army that is predominantly infantry right so that's that's what i would recommend for that pairing now the downside of having sun Tzu primary is the fact that you actually lose this cage of thorns which is a guaranteed slowdown um so you do lose that guaranteed slowdown unfortunately by having sun Tzu as primary so it's kind of a trade-off um, I do think that Sun Tzu primary is a little bit better than Ethel Flood primary if for no other reason then you are slightly less likely to be targeted in the open fields but it's up to you you guys can build this however you want um of course you know Sun Tzu being primary does require less experience meaning you have to spend less experience tombs to level him up I mean you can even see it here a, a level for Ethel Flood is 2.8 million whereas for Sun Tzu it's 2.3 million so it's just going to take a lot less experience to get Sun Tzu to 60 which will make that army composition ready for battle sooner than ethel fled primary with that being said let's move on to the next commander pairing that i can recommend and that is ethel fled primary with a by bars secondary now you could do by bars primary if you wanted to i don't think that's a great option for this specific build because i'm just you know in 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 this instance you're still going to want a uh a mixed army and i don't think the cavalry tree is great for that i don't think the conquering tree is great for that whereas there are still some talents in the infantry tree that benefit um uh, that benefit a mixed army most of them are infantry don't get me wrong but if you just if you look at some of these early talents here um i'm just not that impressed by uh, by a lot of these um so honestly i do think an ethel fled primary by bar secondary is is the preferred uh order of these two commanders and the reason that we're picking by bars is because his primary skill also a really powerful aoe um and it actually is a guaranteed reduction of your enemy targets march speed which means it guarantees you to slow the enemy which means you're guaranteed that 20 percent buff in damage from ethel fled's expertise so 
50 percent march speed reduction for two seconds that's really good again really the, the synergy here is that he's also aoe it's a decent aoe and it, it's also slowing to get you that guaranteed uh that guaranteed damage buff which is nice now this also increases cavalry units attack by 20 percent. so if you do a mixed army in this fashion i would recommend it be a majority cavalry because why not i mean you're getting an extra 20 percent attack so you might as well buff them as much as you can and then everything else here is not that exciting you do heal slightly you get a little bit of march speed this is for cities i don't know uh really the synergy here is mainly with that that active skill which is is nice right i i think that sun tzu ethel fled is a better pairing than ethel fled by bars but i do see a lot of people using ethel fled by bars and i i don't i don't doubt that it's an insanely good combination because of that guaranteed damage buff from the slowdown on by bars active skill now let's talk about the third pair and this pair is really only good for the early game this is an early game pair or maybe an oddly specific uh debuffing army and that would be ethel fled with by uh with Boudica. Um, the reason that you would want Boudica is because she also is a debuffing commander she's decreasing their rage she's decreasing their attack as well on top of that she does restore rage which means you're going to be pumping out active skills a little bit more and she has that healing factor which gives you some longevity for ethel fled again an ethel fled Boudica pairing is not something that i highly recommend but maybe in specific instances where all you want to do is debuff a specific target you could do an ethel fled Boudica, or again if it's the early game then you may not have that many other great options for commanders and so ethel fled Boudica is a uh, is a great option as well i'm not, i don't really use this pairing very much so i don't know which one would be better as a primary i'm i'm trying i'm thinking ethel fled is a better primary because you get that guaranteed slowdown um with her with her talents but maybe it's the case that Boudica is better i'm not sure i'd be willing to bet that ethel fled is better now with all of that being said uh, when we talk about the equipment, obviously I don't have equipment on my Ethel fled because I don't use her as a primary. If you're going to use her as primary, then you will want to have equipment on her. And if you're wondering what the best equipment is for Ethel fled, the answer is whatever equipment gives the most amount of stats to the most amount of troop types. So for example, if we look at Minamoto, his specific, uh, his Vanguard set, for example, gives you a ton of stats, but for only one specific troop type, that's not really what you want for Ethel fled primary. You're going to want her to have something like the staff of lost, where it's giving a decent buff to all of the different troop types that she's going to be bringing to the battle. So that's what I mean by the most amount of stats to the most amount of troop types. That's what I really mean by that. So all three troop types are getting buffs here. Whereas something like this is only one specific troop type is getting a buff. So you want as many items like this on Ethel fled as you can get now of course you know her having the vanguard halberd wouldn't be that bad regardless because it's just a good item but uh, besides that uh, i would fill her out with all the grays that you have and then replace those grays slowly with some uh, different uh, pieces of equipment that are a little bit more powerful with that being said guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope i was be able to inform you guys on kind of what ethel fled's role is and how you can use her effectively and what you should be thinking about when you're trying to decide who to pair her with how to build her when to focus on her things like that and with that said i want to thank you guys so much for watching the video i do have all my social media links in the description below i do stream rise of kingdoms typically about one or two times per week so go ahead and follow me on twitch link is in the description as well as my discord where i will be posting anytime that i go live it'll show up in the discord so you'll see uh anytime that i'm live as well as any new videos and of course the community that is there as well my instagram all my other links are in the description below if you want to play rise of kingdoms on your pc you can download it with the link in the description as well and before you go don't forget to drop a like on the video comment down below any questions you still have about ethel fled and i will try to answer every single one of you guys subscribe for more videos like this one click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace